Now we are going to see about Kefel hematoma and caput succedaneum. So before we go into further, we are supposed to know about hematoma and caput succedaneum. About simple succedaneum. What is simple anatomy we are supposed to know? What? Say for example, this is the skull. Okay. So skull of any a neonate or of a baby. And there are suture lines which is present. And overlying the skull, there is a periosteum. There is a periosteal layer. So the periosteal layer is almost in continuity with the skull bone. But so when it is not almost, it is almost always in continuity with the skull bone. Fine? Are you with me guys? So the periosteum is almost always in continuity with the skull bones. So at the suture lines, there is a discontinuity. Okay. Again it will start and it will continue with the skull bones. And when there is a suture line, there will again, it will end. So it will start from one suture line. It will be just above the periosteum, the, the, the just above the skull and it will end at the uh, another suture line. Similarly, it will start from here and then it will end here. So, what is Kefel hematoma? Kefel hematoma is nothing but blood inside this area. Fine. So, when the blood starts connecting, you will be finding a bump. So, blood inside this. So, since the periosteum is in continuity with the skull bone, so whenever the blood gets collected, it will collect throughout and but it will not cross the suture lines fine so so it will be staying within it but on the other hand if you see a caput succedaneum say for example this is the skull bone and here you are having a periosteum see, this is the suture and it just discontinues with the suture and here we are having the skin but whereas in caput succedaneum, the blood collection is between the skin and the periosteum. So since the blood is collecting here, it can cross the suture lines. Am I clear? Okay. So how to differentiate between Kefel hematoma and caput succedaneum? When the blood collection crosses the suture lines, it is known as caput succedaneum. But when the blood collection stays with the suture lines, it is known as a Kefel hematoma. That's all. As simple as that. You just need to know that there is a bone, skull bone. Overlying it, there is a periosteum. The periosteum will get, uh, there will be discontinuity along with the suture line. That's it. This is the main concept which you need to know to, to understand the difference between the both. So, why, why does this happen? This happens because of, see, when there is, uh, when, uh, when there is an instrumental delivery. So, say for suction, I mean uh, vacuum delivery. So, in that case, a vacuum is created to deliver the baby, isn't it? So, because of vacuum, they can uh, either cephalematoma or caput succedaneum is common. So, caput succedaneum is much more common than cephalematoma. So, even for cephalematoma as well as in caput succedaneum, the treatment is just reassurance and absorption. Sometimes, in some cases, because of the absorption of this blood, uh, there will be a rise of a bilirubin and the child can have a jaundice. That can happen. That is one point which we need to be aware of. So this is the difference between caput uh, hematoma. I'm I'm sorry, cephalhematoma and caput succedaneum.